So what's exciting about these Communities Create projects is that we're wanting to really bring people together in this time where we're all apart. Be part of a time capsule of life during the pandemic through creative outputs. Hey everyone, my name is Vishal. Uh, I'm the interim lead of the Design Fabrication Zone at the Creative Innovation Studio at FCADA Triassin University. Welcome to Communities Create. Hello to everyone in the live session as well as everyone live streaming on Communities Create or CBC Art. The goal of Communities Create is to support independent members of the creative community and to use creativity to unite Canadians and help people express how they're feeling in this time of pandemic and uncertainty when words sometimes aren't enough. We are providing micro grants to independent artists to lead these interactive sessions through a wonderful network of collaborators, including OCAG University this week. It's projections week and today's workshop is Designing with Light with Emma Lopez Hechem, presented in collaboration with the CFC Media Lab. Before we get started, here are some ground rules to ensure that everyone participating has the best experience possible. Number one, try the exercises yourself. This is a participatory workshop and we'll be creating together over the next one hour. As well, we'll be working with a template later on. And if you don't have it yet, you can download it from the website communitiescreate.ca. Hi to everyone watching the live stream. We hope you'll participate too, along with people inside the interactive session. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself, play along, ask questions using the Communities Create hashtag on Twitter, and we'll try to get to as many as we can possible. For those in the session, send the Communities Create video, use the chat to comment and ask questions. Your microphone will be muted, Moderators will unmute you if you have any questions to ask. Any audio is recorded and archived. However, your video will be controlled by you and viewable by other participants. It will not be recorded. We encourage you to hence turn it on to enhance the experience. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Diana Breacher, who heads our mental health task force. Diana, one of the reasons we're doing this is to give people a creative outlet for their emotions. Can you tell us a bit more about your role here? Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I was asked to uh, participate in this uh, project because we are focusing on the um, emotions that we are feeling right now. And we are obviously all in a pandemic um, with different levels of stress. And so um, as we go through this creative process, sometimes feelings get stirred up. And if they do get stirred up, um, we've created a bit of a safety net. So I'm here today with um, my colleague, uh, Rachel. She's a um, graduate student at Ryerson in psychology. And we're gonna be monitoring the chat. If something comes up and you wanna connect with one of us, we're available. And otherwise, stick around after the workshop is over and we stop the recording. And we're gonna have the opportunity to do a bit of a deep. So we'll just be talking about whatever has come up. Um, and in addition, we also have some resources that we've put up on the website that are uh, mental health resources. If things get triggered later on and you need to talk with someone, um, we've provided some um, additional supports for you. And so um, I hope um, everything goes beautifully today. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Diana. It's great to have you and Rachel uh, here with us. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Natalie DeMonte from CFC Media Lab. To tell us a bit about <clears throat> CFC Media Lab's reasons for joining this initiative and, and what they're most excited about. Thank you, Vishal. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie here. Um, nice to see you all here today. Um, the CFC Media, I'll tell you a little bit about the CFC Media Lab for those of you that may not be familiar. We are the, um, we have been operating as the innovation hub of the Canadian Film Centre for over 20 years. We've always been future focused on um, different forms of, of digital media, including screen based entertainment, including immersive media um, for, and the different forms that it takes. And um, we run programming at the CFC Media Lab to help um, accelerate um, 
entrepreneurs, content creators in the space, all within the digital media space. And so new for 2020, we've launched um, Canada's first feminist business accelerator for women and women identified entrepreneurs in the digital media space called Fifth Wave. Um, and I get to be the lucky one today to introduce um, this really cool workshop by one of our most recent grads. I say grads in quotes because it's kind of a funny term to say grads um, of our very first cohort for Fifth Wave, who is Emma Lopez, co-founder and creative director of Ava Animation. Um, and so I just want to introduce her for a minute because she is not only um, a, a exceptional in her artistry as a uh, projection mapping artist, but also um, a, an amazing entrepreneur and uh, an amazing person. And um, she has, her work speaks for herself um the the um artist um sorry the the art by digital by ava animation um has been showcased around the world in japan poland the us russia to name a few um they've won many awards for for their work and um happy to introduce this it's kind of a fitting day. I'm sitting here in, in Toronto and it's very gray and it's very cloudy and it's very dark today. Um, and she's going to be talking to us about how to design with light and with color um, using digital media. And so I present to you Emma Lopez from Ava Animation. Take it away. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Communities Create and the Canadian Film Center for inviting me over to this amazing space that we get to share today. Thank you all for being here. I love projection mapping and it's very exciting to get a chance to share it with you. My name is Emma Lopez and I'm a partner and creative director at Ava Animation and Visual Arts. As Natalie mentioned, we are an animation studio that specializes in creating extraordinary visual experiences for brands, events, and organizations who want to bring joy and engage communities through art, light, technology, creativity, and storytelling. So, um, our creative work at Ava has always been centered around emotions. Why? because emotions create connections that go beyond words. Even if we are separated, we see the same thing and we share an experience, we feel connected. In our case, it's, it's subconscious effort to deliver joy, experiences and journeys, transporting people to times and places they've never seen before. And about this workshop, there's no question that light can transform our perception, but from the emotional point of view, light can become a tool to transform spaces, using our emotions to create and transform environments and everything around us. The Designing with Light workshop is aimed at understanding the creative process that goes behind architectural video projections providing insight in the steps needed to take an idea from concept to reality, as well as a practical advice on approaching a variety of surfaces. We will touch on basic principles and tips on how to create content for projection mapping, following a step-by-step -step approach of the creative process, using our emotions to design with light, on the architectural template provided. So, this is a template we will be working on. It's the City History Museum in Niigata, Japan. If you don't have the template handy, don't worry, you can download it. The, they'll share the link in the chat. And don't worry about the media right now. You, for the process, you can use anything you like. It can be colors, crayons, digital software, molding clay, collage, whatever. Your imagination is the limit. 
if you're feeling inspired after the workshop, you can finish your template right away, but you, you still have some time to refine your creation at your own pace. And then please hand it via email before Thursday. Uh, they also uh, share the, um, the email on, on the chat uh, because we can then see the works live projected on a scale model on a follow-up meeting this upcoming Friday and get a chance to see how our different moods interact together to create unique pieces of art. Now, this is the actual building. <laughs> so what is projection mapping? It's a technique that uses projectors to display content on a non-flat surface. Instead of regular projection screens, the content in the, is displayed in shapes, volumes, architectural facades, etc. And the content is designed with these specific shapes in mind to create a series of optical illusions. No matter how much I explain it, there's no better way that the scene in action. It, Here's a short video with examples of our projection mapping work at Ava so that you get the idea of how things look. what we do so even though some projects might look big i assure you most of these projects were started from home sitting at a desk with just a pencil and a template and an idea that we wanted to share so let's start thinking and designing together as we cover the steps of the creative process 
These are the story walls of the Alcazaba in Malaga, Spain, a project we worked on last Christmas. We had the freedom to create an original story. The only rule was that it had to be Christmas related. So here comes the first step of the project. Brainstorm. This is where we ask ourselves, is there a story, a message, a specific feeling or emotion that I need to share? What do you want this piece to be about? For me, the story I needed to tell was about finding happiness, not only in shiny gifts or decorations, but rather finding the light within and being able to share it with others. So let's start thinking together. If you have a pen and paper nearby at your desk, just take a couple of minutes to write down the first emotion that comes to your mind. How would you represent it visually? Is it a color or a specific shape? What's the story that you would like to tell? What would your work be about for this session? What is it that you need to get out into the world? So take a couple of minutes and just think and write it down. give it another minute Okay, and let's go back. If you don't have it, don't worry, it'll come to you eventually. So we never push creativity. It comes whenever it wants to come. But uh, we can, there's also part in the process. Uh, you can try and call her. So, um, once you have an idea in mind, we go to, to thinking about the style, like um, how are we going to represent this emotion? If you have an idea and you want to expand on it, it helps sometimes to search how other people represent similar concepts. How is love, sadness, or joy visually represented in other cultures? It can be just browsing similar topics represented on different media, for example, Paintings, origami, comics, sculpture, everything works as a source of inspiration. And then the most random thing can do the trick. Uh, that's what I, I was saying that it sometimes it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't come organically, if you don't have an idea in mind, maybe some of things, uh, the things that you like can get you inspired. It doesn't have to be art related, it can be anything. So um, take just three minutes to search for images that you like, uh, things that can inspire you, what's your favorite colors, if whatever you like, just start making like a file, copying those, those images to your folders, the things that we like for this specific project. For example, we, we uh, got inspired by, by book illustrations, by origami, by ancient Victorian fairy tales, by the the amazing handcrafts of the city of Malaga by woodwork etc. So we wanted to create this like really 3D paper feel kind of concept. So take three minutes, search, get inspired. Let's go.
cual mormina? Because I know that these searches can take forever. I spend hours and hours, and sometimes you find amazing things. So uh, this is something that you can keep on working. No worries. Even if you have a not like not a project in mind, just these things that you like that you store will be an inspiration for things that you don't even know yet. So I highly highly suggest that you have them have like these small collections and find. Um, so once that you have an idea and you have looked into different ways of how to represent it, you can then start sketching. When we are telling a story, we need to a series of sketches of each action that will happen and bring them all together in a storyboard. In this case, we are working with just one image, so single sketches will do just fine. So now, Take a look at your template. All its different surfaces are now your canvas. If you have an idea, where will you position the elements? It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just an opportunity to choose areas of interest and think of the best surfaces for your main elements. For example, uh, this template that, that you're seeing right now, it was the one for uh, the project in Spain. It's a series of walls and pillars. And what I had to do is find how to tell a story with these walls and pillars, no? which spaces are best, like hard, cleaner, and have uh, like uh, the best places to put, for example, a face, or which spaces then they need to be like uh, more decorative because there's not much, much to place there. Or how can I? use the shapes to tell a story. It's basically what we do in this um, storyboarding process. So as you see, like I try to design the way and sketch around these, um, uh, these areas. It doesn't have to be highly detailed. It, ha it can be just like scribbled for all you care. As long as you know what, uh, what it represents to you, it's okay. In this case, I try to make it a little more polished because the client was actually going to look at this and approve my concept. So, um, but that's that's the idea, just to to have fun with it and use the shape to tell the story. So now, take a few minutes to draw on your template. Where would you place these main images? How can you make the most of these irregular spaces? How do you reimagine them to represent an idea? So we're going to take five minutes to draw our first approach, let's say. Um, so please, if you can stand the counter. <laughs>
Sorry to interrupt your drawing. I would never do that in, unless we were in this in, for, in this format. So now, now is the fun part. Once you have grounded your concept, you can start creating, picking up your favorite media and start playing with the proportions of the building. I work with 3D. So basically I start feeling it um my my 3d file that is exactly the same proportions as the template with elements that uh, that will create this piece no but if you look closely it's like 85 percent whatever was on the on the on my initial sketch no uh, the cool part of this is that it doesn't have to be 3d it can be clay, stop motion, collage, watercolor, whatever you feel like creating with, it's, uh, it's okay. As long as uh, you have contrast and you have um, like a clear difference uh, between your colors and your what's bright and what's dark, it will read okay. And if you follow the template, whatever you put on it will look good. Um, so this part I would leave to you just to create at home and, and take whatever time you need uh, and explore it further with whatever media you, you prefer. It can be digital, it can be whatever. And um, just, I won't interrupt you in this one. So uh, this is for home, uh, but just uh, to give you an overall insight into the kind of surfaces and how buildings work, I, I want to give you a few tips. For example, there are many different projection surfaces. For the exercise that we're doing, the surface is a plain colored scale model. It's white, so whatever you do will work well. Uh, but what if we need to work or if the wall in your house is a strong, strong texture like brick or stone, then you can play with the content to make the most of the experience. By playing with high contrast and high saturation content, you can make most surfaces work. For example, this one that you're seeing, uh, this octopus that I love, it's for a, a flower park in, in Japan, and this was content aimed at kids. And it's projected on a fountain, but it's a brick fountain. So we had to work with this high contrast. If you see the, the background is dark blue, and then the red, and then you, you see like very clear lines. Uh, and that's how we differentiate like different areas of the fountain from each other and how we play with this texture. You still get to see a little bit of the brick behind it, but you see the image more. And um, if your walls have color, for example, bright yellow, blue, red, then compensate with the com complementary colors like purple, orange, green, and high contrast strong black and white differences. Usually minor details and darker tones can be lost. So um, as long as you play with high contrast, you are okay. Um, I know that not all emotions are, are colorful. Some things can be better said with black and white, but you can still use like this high contrast to represent whatever your idea is. But what happens now when you have windows and water and glass? Well, transparent surfaces will let the light go through. So buildings, building windows are not ideal to place important content like logos or text. The best options are either to design around them. Like if you see the image here, the design is around the windows or find ways to cover them if possible. If there's like fabric or vinyl, that being said, if they can be interesting surface to experiment on. Many artists work with fog and fountains and they can yield amazing results as well. And what about fabrics? 
So regular projection screens are similar to like white blackout curtains. It's like they don't let much light through. But light fabrics can let the light through and ask us a red and act as a kind of a retro projection screens or give like ghostly effects like ghost or mesh. And you can play with that too. Uh, you can get some interesting effects. For example, the example that you see was um, rehearsal for a theater production that was using a special fabric that uh, is semi-transparent but also catches projection. So you can get these kinds of effects, yeah. And contrary to popular belief, uh, because people sometimes think that darker surfaces don't work well with projection, they can work actually extremely well because they provide more contrast. Uh, and you you can get this kind of effect. So don't be afraid of experimenting. If you have a, a dark wall, you might need a, a more potent projector, but it's worth it. And now let's see. There are also examples of things that you can do at home. I know that not, a, not anybody right now, we don't have like big events or buildings to work with, but these are my two beautiful models, and these are things that we, we do at home. I actually um, made them um, like projectors that are not used just to display movies, no? We can create our own environments and play with your kids and transform areas of your home into amazing landscapes. So for example, here are my two little ones playing with interactive particles in, your, in our living room. Uh, and one of these days that the playgrounds were closed and no one could go outside, we tried to make an interesting environment for them and they enjoyed it. And they were busy <laughs> watching something else than Netflix for a couple of hours. So uh, you can play with these kind of, of things. Or for example, another thing that, thing that we did for our little one was um, like, uh, you remember the paper dresses from the dolls? The paper dolls, the ones that you had to cut up. So we would pick dresses and they would, I would project the dresses on the wall and she would get to try them on literally and she was the happiest and she wouldn't let me turn that off and she had me looking for dresses like for a good part of an hour. So it's, it's like, I don't even need to manipulate this. I just need to project it on the wall. And kids don't need like these crazy technical things to be able to enjoy um, situations. You can actually uh, do and like use use technology just to, to play and have fun and enjoy the moment. And, and I think that's what I love the most is seeing these reactions on people when they see the, there's the spaces transformed, the building transformed, the dress on, it's, it's, it's magical. So, um, oh yeah, <laughs> okay, I'm reading a couple of questions and we are, we are getting to, to that soon. Um, I know that uh, some of you might be curious to, to get started on the technical uh, side of things, how these images get warped to fit the buildings exactly how you make that transition from video to to actual projection. There's tons of information online to get you started on, on the technical know-how. If you want to learn more, I would check sites like Mad Mapper, for example. With they have free trial versions to test at home and tons of tutorials to learn that learn at your own pace. If you have an iPad, there's also some digital creations that can be done with a software called Tactool that is pretty, pretty cool. Um, here, and I put the other software here as well for you to see. And I wanna thank you so much for your time. I hope this information was useful and that it can, it can keep you exploring and creating in every way you can. If you have questions, I'll be happy to help. And please don't forget to send your templates. They'll provide the, the email uh, where you should send it to again in the, in the chat. And now let's go to your questions. Thank you so much for everyone that's 
join. I see you. I see you all. I know who you are. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Emma, for doing this workshop. Um, since we have since we have some time left, I'd like to I'd like to ask you a few questions. Um, um, with, with everything that you, that you've done in the workshop and everything that you've been doing with with Ava Studios, um, what inspires you to do what you do? I um, actually I started doing I started in motion graphics and I loved animation. Like um, my I originally come from studying graphic design, but when I saw that design could put, be put into movement with animation and motion graphics, then I realized that there was more to my work that it could not be just like a standstill image, but we can actually kind of get to see around it, no? And then uh, we got an interesting call in via LinkedIn for a projection mapping project in the Middle East 10 years ago. We had no idea how to do this but uh, this company told us, okay, don't worry, we love your animation work, we'll teach you, you just have to come here. So we traveled all the way to Beirut, Lebanon, uh, to work with this amazing company and to learn together because back in the day, there were 2011, there were two examples of projection mapping online. There was nothing, like not even the people who, who design and build the media servers knew how to build content for these things so it was an amazing like discovery process and the moment that you see the reaction on people when they're seeing the the building that they go by every day being transformed is priceless like people it i know it's it's tight deadlines it's hard effort sometimes things get crazy, but that's the, the, the pay of that you get to seeing like the, the, the faces of the people and how they enjoy it and how they it creates um, shared experience, no matter what country you are in. That's, I think that's the, the what really got us to follow this, this path. Absolutely. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's inspiring to, it's inspiring to hear, hear the story from someone who's been so involved in this, from from the early stages, um, and I think I speak speak for a lot of people on the call that that it's definitely inspiring when you see these projections on buildings. I know for a fact that that every Christmas I would go down to New York to visit my girlfriend, and part of what was attractive during Christmas was the was the light at Rockefeller Center that everyone gets to see during nighttime. So it definitely uh, it, it definitely strikes a chord there. We have some great comments and questions that are coming in through the chat as well. Um, and one of the questions that we have from Benny is, what courses, certificates, or diploma opportunities would you recommend for a new grad that is interested in projection mapping? OK. Um, uh, they, are, they are still very few, um, like, official opportunities at universities to learn, learn this software and learn how to do this. Most of the people who will teach you is people who already do this. So they'll, um, there are two ways basically. Learn from someone who has done it or uh, start learning by yourself. Uh, some of the, of the um, softwares that I um, listed, they have amazing tutorials and they will guide you through the learning process. But from doing one thing at home with your projector to actually being in an event and working with these super expensive projectors and setups, it's a long jump. Personally, my shortcut was to start joining open calls for artists and joining um, events that will sponsor that um, that kind of uh, all the AV setup because that will give you the freedom to just focus on your content and if you are a designer, an animator, and whatnot, you can just focus on what you do and uh, start getting the portfolio and the things you need to 
to to start building up your reel really um, because you need to have something to prove that you can do this before a client will actually give you the money to do an installation um, what other things that that you can learn well there there's courses and there's uh, online sessions this this uh, with people don't know how to do it. Actually, I see a couple of them here. Um, but uh, um, the thing that will get you to learn more, experimenting. We are at this amazing phase also with projection. It's not that, like, well, it's, it's old, but the thing that we're using it for is not that old. If And the, the thing with this, pandemic and we are all working from home, if you are able to do something creative at home and build your portfolio, even at the small scale, playing with what you learned from the web websites that I mentioned, then you start knowing the, the know-how and seeing how it works and, and trying to scale that from there. We are at this amazing phase where people have still have the freedom of experimenting and seeing what works and, and not. And um, you will be surprised to see actually um, how it starts translating to the bigger media. For sure, for sure. I hope that helps. I don't no, know. I, I definitely think that answers. And I think um, um, some of our audiences have hopefully taken down some of your advices and notes um, on, on some of these courses. Um, another question that we have from um, the audience is, do you create a story that connects all the ideas? What other media do you think has a similar approach? Comic, short film, etc. Oh, yes. Uh, I think there's, like I said, we are at an amazing stage that we can experiment, no? So I would absolutely love a comic adapted to the shape of a building and telling the story, jumping from here to here. And that's an, an, an idea right in, 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 in itself. Like I, I can totally see it happening. And the same with, with film. You can actually uh, like shoot green screen footage and overlay it in different parts of the building and then work in telling a story with projection. Um, and it goes back to that same point that we are at a stage that we are experimenting and it's no longer about the technique because everyone can learn the technique, but what will, what makes it unique is your own input, your own emotion, the thing that you are, the story that you're telling that will connect with people that you don't even imagine. And that is, it might be just exactly the thing that they need to hear and see right now. So yeah, 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 I can definitely see that the storytelling element is old. And yeah, it's a similar, a very similar. We, we, since we started in, in motion graphics, our approach to creating this kind of content is basically the same approach that we had to create in motion graphics and the same approach that Disney uses to create animation. It's the same creative concept, just applied different. Great, great. Um, We'll probably take this as a last question from our audience. Um, what do you think is the near future for this lovely digital art expression based on, based on the fact that we can't get together for this kind of shows around the world? Um, there is a starting, there's a starting of trend of using the templates virtually and playing the shows in the same way. Um, but what do you think about that, Emma? Yeah. No, this is a, a great colleague of Omar, and his question is is really something that got us thinking because we develop, uh, and I know he has as well. Um, these these technologies were mostly used for events, live events, the place where people could gather, and they are no longer happening. No, so we were at a speech three months ago that is what are we going to do with our lives like we, do we need to change to vr what do we need to do but then i realized that these large projections actually have a key to something else we can get to share like 
we can share experiences. The thing that we're feeling right now, this disconnection, everyone at their home, not knowing and not interacting with people around us. Like if we watch something together, that was the point of cinemas, why we, we go to the movies, if we can watch it at home, is that connection that we, 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 are, we are wired to look these connections with other, like our brains work like that. So the thing that we can do with projection, if we project in large surfaces and people get to see it, they don't need to be together to experience the same thing. So I see projection as a safe opportunity for public art, for engagement, for uh, messages, for like branding and sponsors people. I know that everyone is competing for people's attention online, but people are craving going outside. Why, why if we can provide these spaces, safe spaces, open spaces with projection that people can sit like uh, with safe distance and have these experiences. So I, I see that, that, that um, actually what we, the thing that we know how to do can actually um, be something big from now on if we are able to provide these safe conditions for connecting with each other and having this shared experience. For sure. And I think, and I think this goes back to, to the whole reason why we are doing this is to um, identify that create that role of creativity in crisis and and uh, will make our communities more connected so that we can all we can all come out of this uh, stronger and and uh, better um, with that being said I'd like to I'd like to thank everyone for for watching this live stream and watching the video a quick reminder to all to join our viewing party on Friday August 7th where we will project all the great submissions um, you can send it. You can send us your submissions using hashtag communities create or through the form that you will receive following the workshop. Um, thank you so much, Emma, again for for hosting this workshop. It was really nice um, having you and and uh, taking you taking us through this workshop of what you do at Eva and giving us a glimpse of a uh, glimpse of uh, architectural projection. Um, I'd also like to thank Natalie and the CFC Media Lab. For uh, for being with us today and and uh, presenting this workshop today. Uh, next week we have expressive self portraiture with Mark Kelly presented by CBC Yukon. Check you can check out the archives at communitiescreate.ca for our previous sessions on writing, digital storytelling, visual art, and even mask making. Um, thank you so much everyone for joining us. Now. I'd like to invite you to stay for a well-being and mental health debrief with Diana. Uh, bye to everyone who's leaving now, and uh, we'll take a moment and then over to you, Diana. Thank you. <laughs>